that's it. Sorry about that. Hmm. Thanks very much, Matt. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to overview the current trends in livestock, particularly in relation to the drought. Um, uh, and I'll present our outlook for the meat and livestock industries over the medium term. And then mainly focusing on beef, uh, given the time that I've got, I'll look at some of the international trade issues as well as the um, issue of international competition, which we've been hearing quite a bit about this morning already. But first, underpinning our outlook is, of course, uh, the drought and the severe impact it's been having on our livestock industries. We can see here that uh, rainfall over the 18 months to January, over the eastern half of Australia, ranged from well below average to severe deficiency in many regions, particularly, uh, particularly in inland Queensland, northern New South Wales, parts of Victoria and South Australia. For cattle and sheep, the dry conditions have led to sharp increases in numbers turned off for slaughter. So let's have a look at what's been happening. In the six months to December 2013, cattle slaughter was 9% higher in Queensland compared with the same, uh, the same period six months before. In New South Wales, slaughter was 14% higher and Victoria 28% higher. As a result, we had large falls in prices with the largest falls in Queensland. Drought-induced turnoff results not only in sharply higher numbers turned off for slaughter, but Animals may be offered in poorer condition. A larger proportion are breeding females, which are um, lighter and lower value. And there's reduced demand, of course, for animals for restocking. And these are all factors that, um, that, that lead to downward pressure on sale yard prices. The weighted average sale yard price for cattle uh, is forecast to average 290 cents a kilogram dressed weight this year, 2013-14. Now that's 18% below the 10-year average in real terms. For adult sheep also, um, slaughter was sharply higher as a result of the dry conditions with the surge in slaughter greatest in Victoria. The sheep flock is forecast to fall more than 2 million head this year, down to 71.8 million as at uh, June 2014. For the 12 months to December, uh, 2013, sheep sale yard prices were 12% lower than in 2012. Lamb prices have been held up by um, fairly strong export demand, so they were only marginally lower. So what about going forward? What's in store for the short and medium term outlook? While the droughts had an impact on the current season, Going forward, of course, our forecasts and projections are based on the assumption of normal or near average seasonal conditions. And this is where the chance of, um, of roughly equal above or below median rainfall. Anything more than normal poses upside risk to our forecasts. And of course, continuation of poor seasonal conditions poses downside risk. But based on uh, average seasonal conditions going forward, you can see here, the increase in cattle slaughter in 2013-14 and the corresponding drop in prices just before the grey shaded area, which are our projections. Now, assuming a return to normal seasonal conditions next year, the sale yard price is forecast to rise by 12% next year and to continue rising in real terms out to 2016-17. Um, and this is as we go through a herd rebuilding phase where restocker demand is high and slaughter falls. At the same time, prices will be supported by strong beef export demand, and that's assisted by the lower Australian dollar, or our assumption of a lower Australian dollar. For the final couple of years of the outlook period, uh, we're expecting a return to expansionary phase of cattle cycle, and we'll see slaughter and production start to rise, and prices ease in real terms. For lamb, uh, prices have been supported by strong export demand. The sale yard price is forecast to average 15% higher this year and to increase a further 8% next year as lamb availability tightens. Over the medium term, stronger income growth in the Middle East uh, will see demand for higher value cuts of lamb, uh, while further demand uh, for lamb 
uh, from China, or demand from China for lamb, um, will also support prices as our production expands. Adult sheep prices are forecast to rise 22% next year, and this reflects the contraction in available supply as producers begin to rebuild breeding stocks. Flock rebuilding intentions are expected to continue to place upward pressure on prices over the medium term, with the sheep flock expanding gradually to around 75 million head by 2018-19. Now, pig producers uh, have seen improved pig prices in 2013-14, with the weighted average over the hooks price forecast to rise 7%. This shows increased demand for locally produced pig meat in the processed meat sector. Uh, we've had a decline in imported pig meat from the United States, and with the high US uh, prices reducing their want to um, export, while imports from other sources have remained fairly stable. But next year, we expect imports from the United States to rise again as US pig prices ease. And as a result, Australian prices are forecast to come back 3%. And with grain prices expected to, to remain relatively high next year as a hangover from the reduced summer crop this year, growth in Australian pig meat production, uh, we believe, will be constrained next year. However, increasing imports for the processed pig meat market will place downward pressure on pig prices over the medium term. Now, you probably already knew that chicken meat was our most consumed meat here in Australia, but did you know we were also one of the highest chicken meat consumers per capita in the world on a per person basis? USDA statistics here show Australia ranked fourth but this is um, their top 10 in a select list of major countries and doesn't include um, a, a range of uh, small countries, for example, in the Caribbean, where chicken meat consumption may be considerably higher than here. But still, that's interesting. Um, Australia's projecting Australian, uh, ABARES projecting Australian chicken meat production to continue to rise, with its share of Australian meat production increasing from its current 25% to 28% by 2018-19. The ongoing increase in consumer demand, uh, domestic consumer demand is responsible for this as chicken meat retail prices remain below prices of alternative meats. Uh, this uh, CPI index of relative changes in meat prices over time show the competitive position of chicken meat. Over the past two decades, the prices of other meats have risen relative to chicken meat. And this is reflective of, uh, I guess, the strong productivity growth achieved in the chicken meat industry, having increased uh, feed efficiency and shortened the time it takes uh, for chickens to reach their ideal slaughter weight. This is likely more achievable for the chicken meat industry, given its highly concentrated and vertically integrated structure. Now, I want to turn to some trade and international competition issues, and for ease, I'm, I'm going to focus on beef. So this is a, a chart of Australia's beef and veal exports over 10 years, including our short-term forecast. And we can see some increase in exports to the United States and Korea, and a decline in exports to Japan. But what's really notable is the sudden increase in exports to China since the beginning of 2012, such that China has become our, um, our third uh, largest market, overtaking Republic of Korea. Within the other category at the top, there's a raft of countries which take smaller quantities of our beef, and it's some of this share that's been diverted to mainly to China. So I wanted to highlight some of the international trade issues that are influencing our beef export outlook. Firstly, Japan. Um, a year ago now, Japan loosened its BSE-related um, restrictions on US imports, where, where beef from US cattle up to 30 months of age can now be imported, whereas before, since their BSE outbreak in 2003, only beef from cattle younger than 21 months of age could be sourced. This opens up the eligibility of, of US beef for the Japanese market from less than 50% of their production to more than 90% of their production. So we've been losing market share to the US in Japan, and we expect strong growth 
in US exports or a continuing focus of the US on Japan um, to continue. The Korea Australia FTA uh, will put us on a much better footing in Korea now that there'll be a phased elimination of tariffs. This will help Australian beef maintain its competitive position in the Korean market. In the United States, we've now got herd rebuilding after a number of years of herd liquidation. This means a lower supply of cow beef in the United States, therefore increasing demand for imports of manufacturing beef from Australia. Now, we saw in the, sudden, uh, the, the previous chart the sudden growth in demand from China. Chinese demand for imported beef has increased as they're consuming more than they produce. Australia is currently the largest supplier of beef to China. Um, it's forecast to account for 60% of China's imports this year, but we do expect more competition in this market going forward, which I'll, I'll come back to in a minute. And in Indonesia, we now, of course, have a new import mechanism to replace the import quotas on beef and live cattle. In September last year, the Indonesian government adopted a reference price mechanism to determine imports. Without the import quota, we expect demand to rise from Indonesia for both beef and live cattle. So how this works, um, the Indonesian government, of course, still wants, it still wants to pursue self-sufficiency in beef, but it also wants beef prices to come down. So as part of their policy to remove import quotas, they adopted a reference price for beef of 76,000 rupiah. When retail prices for secondary cuts are 15% below, 15% uh, above the reference price, which is marked by the red line there in the chart, beef and live cattle imports will be allowed. When they're 5% below the reference price, they will not be permitted. So the reference price is marked by the red line and that 20% that 20 toler uh, 20 uh, 20 tolerance band is marked by that red shading. Prices are currently sitting around 30% above the reference price and they're unlikely to come down to it in the short term. So since the Indonesians adopted the reference price mechanism, monthly beef exports to Indonesia have doubled compared with the previous 12 months. Likewise, the reference price uh, governs uh, live cattle imports. Australian live cattle exports are forecast to increase 46% this year to 750,000 head and a further 3% next year to 775,000 head, mainly reflecting increased demand from Indonesia but also Vietnam. Now finally I want to go back to the issue of uh, uh, global competition in beef. <clears throat> Higher global food demand of course will provide opportunities for Australian exports but it's important to recognise the competition we face in the global market. And you can see here the startling growth in exports from India, overtaking Australia for second place and rising to challenge Brazil. The Indian government has negotiated a memorandum of understanding with China for the imports of Indian buffalo meat. Uh, trade is poised but hasn't yet started. The United States is also working on restoring access to the Chinese import market since it was excluded after its BSE outbreak 2003. Brazil is also excluded from China at the moment because of their single BSE case a couple of years ago. So perhaps it's just a matter of time before they both are enjoying that market. Now, neither India nor Brazil enjoy a foot and mouth disease free status as we do. So at the moment, they're not making inroads to some markets that are valuable to us and hopefully that remains the case for quite some time. Now just summarising, uh, recapping, um, our forecasts are assuming normal seasonal conditions, livestock prices are forecast to rise next year and over the medium term as we go through a herd and flock rebuilding phase recovering from the current drought. There are a number of trade issues influencing the export outlook, particularly for beef, and these are Japan's relaxation of uh, restrictions on US beef imports, and that'll continue seeing us um, lose market share in Japan. The Korea-Australia FTA and phased elimination of tariffs will put us on a much, much better footing in Korea. US herd rebuilding will result in increased demand for Australian manufacturing beef. 
Chinese demand for beef is increasing as they're consuming more than they produce. And Indonesia's new reference price mechanism will result in increased demand from Indonesia for both beef and live cattle. While uh, higher global food demand will provide opportunities for Australian beef exports, we expect we'll be facing greater competition in the global market over the medium term from countries such as India, Brazil, and the United States, particularly in China. Thanks.